Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Tsipurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Appointments Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today with me is Dr. Kevin Wandler, who is the Chief Medical Officer of Advanced Recovery Systems. Dr. Kevin, could you tell us a little bit more about what Advanced Recovery Systems does? Absolutely. Um, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Advanced Recovery Systems started about 10 years ago, and um, our dream was to have a recovery treatment program uh, for um, individuals with addictions, of course, mm -hmm. and co-occurring disorders, depression, anxiety, trauma, those sorts of things. But everyone that comes in, in most of our programs, uh, have a primary substance use disorder. And so as a result of that, um, we do detoxification to get people safely off of medications, uh, uh, substances, illegal, and uh, some, are, some of them are prescribed, of course. And uh, we do, um, then we do residential care, which mm -hmm. is um, part of, uh, it's kind of a step down from detox, where patients start learning um, all about the skills necessary for recovery. We also evaluate um, individuals, especially with opiates and with alcohol, um, um, to give them medications called medication-assisted therapy. It's, these are medications that help decrease cravings uh, for some and, and for others, depending on the drug medication prescribed. It may also even prevent um, getting high, you know, so help helping break that cycle. Um, and then we step down. That what makes us unique, I think, is... Um, uh, detox and res are pretty common throughout the United States in treatment yeah. programs, but we also offer housing for people with PHP mm -hmm. partial hospital, and it's called intensive outpatient. Is the, those are the next two lower mm -hmm. levels, um, and and what that does, and we found in our our data, and we we get evaluated by insurance carriers. They give us report cards, right, um, that our patients, uh, the longer they stay in a safe recovery environment, and those that need MAT and take it, the better their outcomes. You know, we're trying to, and now unfortunately, uh, we've had a surge of this little nasty drug, um, fentanyl. And uh, it's, it's, it's a killer. I mean, it's changed how, I, how we do business. And uh, as a result of that little nasty bug um, drug, uh, we we really are really pushing medication assisted therapy medications mm -hmm. like buprenorphine suboxone is pretty common name um, mm -hmm. it's a brand name of buprenorphine and so that people won't overdose you know I mean yeah. it's really uh, it helps prevent that in the end and it decreases cravings and lots of things but um, and then we're not the end all, you know, then we work really hard on getting our patients to see a provider, hopefully within a week after leaving um, and then um, doing follow-up care, of course, you know, so, yeah. Excellent. And how should business leaders be thinking about these issues among their staff members? How should they be approaching them? What's the mindset with which you wish to convey? Well, I think that anyone, I mean, technically substance use disorders are a mental, you know, part of the mental illness. Um, there's a mm -hmm. book that we utilize to code and help classify psychiatric disorders. And it's called DSM, uh, Diagnostic Statisticians Manual, number five is out. Um, and, and it's in there along with depression, anxiety, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I think that what's happened for business owners, a couple things, first of all, got so crazy with COVID, right? You know, yeah. I mean, a lot of people had to work from home um, that led to some isolation, even though they're working maybe on a Teams or, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, some sort of a platform like this, it, it added to isolation. And um, I think as a result of COVID, it caused a lot of depression, a lot more mm -hmm. mental illness came out. Uh, whether it's depression, anxiety, or substance use disorder. I mean, it's yeah. just gone trajectory. Um, and so I think what business um, owners need to look at, first of all, is <laughs> should they even do drug testing? You know, okay. I mean, that's where it starts even before you're hired. Some of them require it, you know, mm -hmm. some 
certain types of businesses and especially for employees, employers, and they would know this, you know, if they have government contracts that they have to do some pre-employment drug testing. Sure, of course. Um, and then, you know, the other times you would even look at that would be pre-employment. And then if you're doing random drug testing, and then there's um, obviously if someone's in an accident, I mean, that's what <laughs> we do. If one of our employees is on the job and they're in an accident, a car accident, for example, we would also, you know, send them obviously to the ER to get us evaluated, but we'd all want a drug test. And then um, just suspicion of of behavior of that looks, uh, whatever that means, looks like it's, uh, uh, you know, someone's impaired. I mean, they're slurring their words, they're confused, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, and I think those are some key areas. What's interesting, which has happened over the last really 10 years, is, is cannabis. Yeah. In the workplace. I mean, you know, alcohol is one thing and I'm not promoting alcohol by any means, but, you know, if you drink alcohol, it metabolizes in men usually in an hour, you know, one glass or a beer or a glass of wine or a, a shot mm -hmm. of some hard alcohol. One hour, it's out of your system. Obviously, if you drink five beers, it takes sure. longer, but one, one, it's, it's gone. If you're a daily cannabis smoker, or user, um, and you live in a state, I mean, we have 21 states right now, including um, District of Columbia and Guam that have legalized mm -hmm. recreational cannabis. Yep. And you're going to be positive on your drug screen, it can be up to 30 days. So it's just something, you know, um, to be aware of when our patients come in that are positive for cannabis, we send it to the lab, and we get a number, you know, of how, how much cannabis is mm -hmm. in their system. And we we do random drug screens on our patients even, and we want to make sure that the cannabis number is going down. You know, mm -hmm. my hope is that if they stay with us long enough, usually about a month, um, it'll be zero, you know, and, and that's great. It's also great for the patient to know your drug screen's clean, buddy, you know, um, and, uh, or, or, you know, it's negative for any drugs of abuse. <laughs> Complicating that, though, is that there's a total of 37 states, so an additional 16 states that have um, medical cannabis laws. Yes. And, and um, as an addiction medicine physician um, and psychiatrist, um, you know, I, 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 well, no physician can prescribe cannabis. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't do that. We, we, in every state that has it legalized for medical cannabis, <laughs> Um, you have certain protocols, you have to meet certain criteria. And so the okay. physician, all he or she does, they do is um, certify that John Doe has these problems and it checks a box. Oh. And, and, and every state's a little bit different, but they are depression, anxiety, sleep, sure. um, pain, you know, different things like that are the common um, uh, indications in different states of where that... Um, you know, those other 16 states that don't have recreational cannabis. And in those states, it's illegal. And it's a federally illegal. That's why physicians can't prescribe it. You yeah. know, we can only say that you have depression, you have sleep issues based on your history. And, and then we can, um, if, if we so chose, we can, um, you know, certainly fill out a card for them um, in those 16 mm -hmm. states. But yeah, anyhow, it, it's an issue. And so if sure. you use cannabis, like I said, it can stay in your system a long time. If, if, uh, and it can affect your, you know, your um, reaction time, your depth perception, mm -hmm. coordination, a lot of federal um, programs have a zero tolerance for cannabis. So you, you mm -hmm. get a pre-employment drug screen, it's positive for cannabis, yeah. you won't get hired. And, and think of those areas where you need coordination, you need a good reaction time. I mean, it's pretty much DOT, Department of Transportation. So it's airline pilots. Yeah, you don't really want them high, right? It's sure. or intoxicated, for that matter. Uh, it's people running heavy duty machinery, you know, mm -hmm. and um, forklift drivers, um, people that drive for a living, you know, sure. um, FedEx, et cetera, drivers, you know, they can't be impaired. And so, or you don't well, want them So, impaired. but let's talk about businesses that have, let's say, staff like in marketing or HR or right. programmers. They don't need those reaction times, right? So what are right. you thinking about in terms of, the, let's say, recreational states where it's recreationally or medically approved? 
should businesses even be testing for cannabis in sectors where they don't have to care about the reaction time of their employees, where it's much more of a knowledge worker, creative, which might be, and I have no idea. I mean, right. I'm not a user, but some many people say that cannabis facilitates their creativity. So right. what are you thinking of in terms of, is this even something that businesses should be worried about, or is this not something they should be worried about if they are not dealing with people for whom reaction time is an important issue? Well, and, and you bring up a very good point. I mean, businesses are not required, except those that have, again, those government contracts sure. to do drug testing. And it's expensive. I mean, you know, we, we have to, we do drug testing because um, the nature of our business, we're healthcare. Of course. And, and, and I believe the majority of health, like hospitals, et cetera, uh, do drug testing. So we have to pay for a pre-hire drug test mm -hmm. and then random drug tests, et, et cetera, et cetera. And it's costly. And so a small business owner probably won't even bother doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they don't need to, you know, um, that being said, you also, you know, again, um, that person who works from home, say, and um, uh, is, you know, more IT versus, um, you know, out there driving, using yeah. the heavy machinery, et cetera, um, it, may not, it may not be a concern, you know, mm -hmm. it may not be a concern unless you start seeing a decline in their work, et cetera. And most businesses, I mean, again, the small businesses don't, but larger ones, you know, we have employee EAP programs to help people, you know, especially yeah. during COVID, a lot of people utilized it because a lot of people got sick and, yeah. and, and started utilizing EAP uh, much more, even a lot of it's tele, just like we're doing right now, you know, it's, it's, on, it's, it's a tele session and it can be very helpful, you know, so it's, a, it's a nice thing. We offer, um, you know, tele. EAP services for our, our, our we, we don't do it, but we have it contracted out. I can't mm -hmm. be the provider of, you know, by staff, you know, so, um, sure. so we contract that out, but yeah, it's not required by any means. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's a good nuance. And I think that's clarifies things as we come to the conclusion, what do you, of our interview, what do you think is going to be the future of recovery? What are you seeing? is going to be what kind of improvements are going there. So for example, a number of fields are being impacted by artificial intelligence. Is that part of the future of recovery? Maybe there are other things that you're seeing, maybe some medications that are on the horizon. Right. What are you seeing as the future of yeah, recovery? Yeah, there's some excitement else? out there, I, I, especially in the AI field, mm -hmm. you know, artificial intelligence, or they're actually coming up with some... Um, I mean, part of the treatment, in addition to detoxification, maybe medication usage given to help um, for MAT, drugs like cocaine, don't, we don't have an MAT for cocaine right now, mm. you know, and, and amphetamines, we don't have it, and the hallucinogens and, and, and drugs like that. So the, t the best treatments really are, are therapies, and you can, there's a lot mm. of manualized AI kind of therapies coming out, and they've been very successful. And we're not utilizing them because I'm using old fashioned humans to do therapy. <laughs> uh, but and I think early on, that's really a better place. Mm -hmm. And we have patients that don't live 30, 40 miles away. And that's a long way, especially in some of the major mm -hmm. metropolitan areas to be able to get to a provider so they can do a lot of things online, which is really nice. You know, some of our medications we still don't do online. Um, you know, because I, I would like a drug screen before I give you a shot, you know, and obviously I yeah. can't give you a shot through the computer. So sure. that's part of it. I think the other area is they are looking at, um, you know, th there's so much technology out now. And even you, we saw that with the antivirals, you know, well, they're looking at doing almost an antiviral for cocaine. Oh. They've been working on this for a while that you get a shot, you know, like a flu shot or a COVID shot. And, and you may be immune to some of the effects of cocaine. Mm. Right? And for someone who's a heavy duty user, I mean, I don't need a shot like that, but sure. for someone who's been trying to get off of cocaine, if, you know, it'd be like then they use the cocaine and nothing happens. Mm. So why spend your money, right? You know, I yeah. mean, if you're not gonna get a buzz, what's the point? <laughs> and uh, um, if you're a cocaine user, so I see that as exciting. They've been working on that mm. for a while. Hasn't been too successful yet, but our technologies improve every year, you know, and 
I think we'll have other medications. Their work, I was just doing some re review articles, not for this talk, but for uh, myself. And they're really coming up with some unique um, pharmacotherapeutic interventions mm -hmm. for all these addictions. And I see that as really a good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'll just say that my, my big plug is that tragically, only about 10% of people with a substance use disorder reach out for help. Oh. And so, you know, really, um, the you, with some of the, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, all cover this stuff in addition to regular insurance. And so for those people, you know, they, they should be able to get help. And, mm -hmm. and I really, um, you know, would like them to see, to get help. They can certainly reach out to us. We don't, we're only, only, we're only like in seven states, but, you know, mm -hmm. we certainly have resources throughout the nation um, for individuals because we've been, you know, our patients come from all over the United mm -hmm. States. They don't just come from Florida where we have three facilities or, or Georgia where I'm at right today. Um, you know, the Atlanta area, uh, they come from all over the United States for care. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we, we try to have resources for them when they go home. To me, that's our, our part's key to save lives. And then the follow-up mm -hmm. is also very important. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. This was very helpful. Where can people learn more about your program and which states are you present in? So can you name all the states? Sure. So currently we're in Washington State, um, just um, in Vancouver, Washington area, just north of Portland. So it's both Oregon and Washington there. And then we are in, um, uh, we have an outpatient clinic in Colorado Springs. And then we have an inpatient unit just south of there in a town called Plummer Lake, Colorado, just north of, um, mm -hmm. it's just right there. Then we have uh, facilities in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we just opened up in Kansas City, Missouri. We have a facility in, in Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. Uh, supporting my new staff. Um, we have a specialty program in Maryland for firefighters. Mm. It, it's it's co-sponsored. I mean, there's no financial sponsorship. It's co-sponsored with IFF, the International Association of Firefighters. Mm. So we're able to treat not only substance use disorder, but trauma. And, mm. and they certainly, I mean, 9-11 just opened the, everyone's mm. eyes to trauma for firefighters, you know, um, and, and others, of course, that were affected by 9-11. But I mean, they were in it, you know, trying to save yeah. lives. And it, it truly opened that whole area mm -hmm. up. Um, what amazing work they do. Uh, we're then three in Florida, one in, two in the greater Orlando area, and then one down mm -hmm. in West Palm Beach. And then we have an outpatient clinic in Miami. So we're, we're spread out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the best place to reach us is probably um, advancedrecoverysystems.com. Um, and, uh, you know, the, and they can see all about the work we do. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, when I had hair, I think my picture's old <laughs> so, <laughs> before COVID I had hair. We'll just get <laughs> that. Um, I didn't know that was one of the side effects. <laughs> it's, um, I'm just kidding. I'm just, you know, that was, sure. yeah. So I get it. You know, so all that's right. how well, thank you. Us, advanced recovery systems.com. Mm -hmm. And, and we have people 24 seven, like, you know, that answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll be on the website and then call in and, and get support, even if it's not for us, we want to help save lives. So again, our, 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 our thing is we'll try to help get a program for them that may be in their area. Um, excellent. Well, thank you. This was very helpful. Really appreciate your time. Sure. No problem. I appreciate it. Thanks for reaching out. And thank you to the audience for checking out another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you checked out the show and leave a review. It helps others discover the show and it helps us improve the show. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. And in the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends. Thank you.